Welcome to video number 58 in the Using iTrain tutorial series. My name is Bob Fuller and we are continuing to move through the different kinds of condition elements that are available in actions. Next on the list is the aspect. Welcome back. In the previous video, we looked at the value 8-bit feedback condition. The value 8-bit is used when we have a sensor or device that is able to generate 8-bit data. In other words, it can produce values from 0 to 255. And as with any feedback sensor, the information flow is always in the same direction from the sensor and into iTrain. In this tutorial, we will look at another device that is capable of handling 8-bit numbers called the aspect. But instead of generating 8-bit numbers, it can only receive 8-bit numbers. So the flow of information is always in the other direction from iTrain and out to the aspect. And unlike the value 8-bit feedback, which currently is rarely used, the aspect is a very useful and commonly used item in iTrain, especially within Actions. Now, as a reminder, with the value 8-bit feedback sensor, if you have the actual physical device, it can currently only be used with the OC32 accessory decoder. With the aspect, we have a similar limitation in that the OC32 is currently the only hardware that fully supports 8-bit data flow and which is supported within iTrain. So, if you want to use a real physical aspect device that requires 8-bit data, you would need the OC32 accessory decoder. Now, that doesn't mean that there isn't other hardware out there that could do the job or do it in a different way. For example, depending on how the aspect has been designed, it may be possible to display the different characters on a root indicator, for example, using simple on-off data rather than needing a full 8-bit value, in which case a less sophisticated accessory decoder might work. And I'm currently researching that idea to see how viable it is, and may present something on it in a future tutorial. However, the good news is that we can use the aspect very effectively within iTrain using a virtual aspect, one that exists in software only and therefore does not require any physical hardware. And that is what we will be focusing on in the next two to three tutorials. But before then, it is worthwhile spending a few minutes 
talking about accessories in general and where the aspect fits in to that category. An aspect in iTrain is a member of a group of items called accessories. The different types of accessories are listed here and they each have their own switchboard elements. These are the symbols shown on the iTrain switchboard. And they each have their own control object template. That's the editor page that contains attributes specific to that particular type of accessory. Here's the control object for a turnout and for a relay, a decoupler, a crossing, a turntable and for an aspect. So clearly it is important to use the switchboard element and its associated control object that best matches the accessory that you are creating. Because the different control objects contain attributes specific to that type of accessory. But you might ask, what do we do if we have an object that does not fit into one of the types that I've just listed. Well, an aspect is classified as a general accessory. So it might be possible to use the device as an aspect in those instances. But always try to use one of the specific types wherever possible to ensure the best performance from that accessory. OK, so that's an overview of accessories in general. Let's now focus on the aspect. Remember this little table which we've used in previous tutorials? So an aspect is a dual mode static device. So in an action condition, it can be used as a trigger or as a static state. In the manual, it is defined as a basic element used to switch between multiple states. Instead of the usual two states, for example, the on and off state with a feedback, an aspect can switch between up to 32 different states. And actually in the future release of iTrain 5.1, that will increase to 256 different states. Now, although the aspect is classed as a general accessory, the original reason the aspect object was created in iTrain was to provide a method for displaying information on the physical layout. And this remains its primary use. So, for example, we would use an aspect if we had a theatre root indicator or perhaps a digital clock or a train departure board used at a train station. Now, we know from previous tutorials that an object in iTrain consists of three parts. 
the physical or virtual object, which, as I've just said, in the case of an aspect display, that might be a theatre route indicator, or a digital clock, or a train departure board at a station. Secondly, the switchboard element. This is just the graphical representation of the aspect shown on the iTrain switchboard. In this case, the graphical element displaying a value between 0 and 31, which is reflecting the current state of the aspect. And here we can see the 32 different states that it can have. And thirdly, if I right click on it and select properties, we have the aspect properties, which is the control object. This is the logical or software representation of the aspect created in iTrain that defines the object so that iTrain knows what the object is and how to communicate with it. We will look at this all in more detail later. Now, it's important to emphasize that the aspect element shown in the switchboard will only display the state of the object. So a number between 0 and 31. Therefore, you might ask if the aspect element can only display numbers from 0 to 31, what use is that if we want to display the details of, for example, a train departure notice board on a station? Well, the 0 to 31 is only what the switchboard element is able to display, which is not necessarily the information displayed on the real physical display. For an aspect, the actual physical device can be configured to display almost anything, depending on the device's capabilities. For example, if the physical device was a theatre route indicator, state 0 shown on the switchboard element may mean that the physical display on the layout is turned off or has a blank display. State 1 may mean that the physical theatre displays Platform 1, for example. State 2 might mean that the display will display Platform 1A. State 3 could be Platform 2. State 4 could be Platform 2A. Or it may display the up signal to indicate the up line or the down line. Or if the physical aspect device is a station information board, each state might display a different predefined list of train arrivals and departures. So again, state 0 may mean that the departure board displays nothing. State 1 may show the 1944 arrival from Penzance. 
and state 2 may show a different screen, perhaps a list of departures. So the 32 states of the aspect, state 0 to 31, shown on the switchboard element, relate or map to up to 32 different display patterns which are shown on the physical aspect. The actual data sent from iTrain to the aspect is still in the form of 8-bit data, thus allowing many different symbols to be displayed depending on the capabilities of the physical device. So an aspect is primarily intended to be used as a way of displaying information on our layout. And it can be used as a general accessory when a device you are trying to use does not fall into any of the other accessory types. But the real power of the aspect is in its ability to switch between multiple different states, combined with the ability to test for those states in an action. So, instead of only being able to test for two states, such as on and off, like with a feedback, with an aspect, we can test for multiple different states. And that opens all sorts of possibilities for creating actions that perform useful tasks on our layouts. And that is the subject of the next tutorial, where we will create an action using a virtual aspect that will act as a type of counter. So that's it for an introduction to aspects. If you have any questions on this or any of the other tutorials, please post your question on the iTrain forum. It makes it easier for us to help you and allows others to search for answers in the future. I'm Bob Fuller. Thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.